all right so why are we spending so much time on data cleanup because in real life we get the data and we want to analyze it of course but all of us spend a lot of time in the cleanup part and that gives us less time on the analytical part now how do we do it traditionally usually we will do this by various methods one would be manual other would be other would be formulas and third would be macros or a permutation combination of all these three methods i am sure all of you do this anyway but what has happened is power query has made all our efforts in data cleanup completely obsolete so i strongly suggest whatever you may be doing to do data cleanup it may be working no problem but still look at power query afresh so any data cleanup requirement small or large revisit that process and recast it using power query forget about what you were doing earlier and that will give you significant benefits as we go along you will get lot of ideas go and try them out later when i am showing something don't try to do it right there because you will miss the next topic so where is this power query fortunately for us this power query as a tool is available in excel as well as in power bi so whether you learn it in power bi or excel you already know the other part so that's a good thing in excel where is it earlier we had get external data which has been which has been there for decades now it is replaced with get and transform this will be newer versions of excel i will not tell you the version number because there are so many version numbers and people get confused if you go to your excel data tab and you see get and transform that means you have that if you see get external data that means you have older version of excel sometimes you see get external data and get and transform so just check the second one as well in case you don't have it you can install it as an add in power query add in if you install it as an add in then it will be a separate tab it will not go under data because we added it on top of excel now the power query tab has many menu options like this but if you already have the new version of excel you don't need this power query tab all these menus have been crunched into this area so practically menus are same it's just the layout and position which is different now in power bi where is it so this is power bi this is power bi and in power bi where do we have this let me show you in power bi again we have get data and we have transform data as a separate button but basically the same thing okay so just a quick understanding of what is the commonality or differences between how data is handled in excel and how it is done in power bi as i showed you get and transform is the menu in excel get data and transform data is in power bi the difference comes where to store the data in excel we have two choices one is excel sheet and the other is data model in power bi power bi works independent of excel so there is no excel sheet there so there is only data tab let me show you both because many people who are using excel don't understand what is that data model so when we import data from data get data whatever in source it will ask you do you want to store it in an excel sheet or data model where is data model for that in it will require power pivot tab and this thing here is called the data model power pivot manage if you see that is the data model really so when you click on it what happens is it opens a separate window that's called the power pivot for excel window and this is your data model generally if you have never used it if this part will be empty but power query can insert data directly in the data model instead of putting it in the sheet what is the benefit of putting data in the data model instead of the sheet data model has no upper limit excel sheet has a upper limit of 1 million rows 
data model, no limit. Practical limit is the hardware capability, but technically no limit. It gives you many other benefits and this data model is same as what we get in Power BI. So where is Power BI data model? Let's see that as well. So when you go to Power BI, there are three things on the left side. Power BI has a main menu on top, file, home, insert. And on the left side, there are three tabs. The first tab is report where we create the visualization. The second tab is the data tab. And the third tab is relationships tab. So this is the data model, second tab. So in Power BI, it will go in this tab. And in Excel, it will go to the other tab. Depending on what you chose, it will either come into the Excel sheet or it will go to the data model. All right. Now, what next? In Excel, you can shape data. What is shaping data? We will see later, but both are possible in data model. In Excel, the analytical engine is pivot table, pivot charts and manual calculations, whatever you want to do. In Power BI is the reports tab, which I just showed you. How do you share reports in Excel? Send the files and the link by putting it on OneDrive, Teams, SharePoint or copy paste into PPT. In Power BI, yes, you can save the file as PBIX file and send it to each other like Excel or put it on OneDrive, SharePoint and send the link. But ideal method is you don't want the data to be shown to other people. So that's Power BI portal, publish it and then you can also see it on mobile app and Yes, you can export it to PPT or PDF. And then we have online data import possible using data sets and data flow. We will see that towards the end. So now the topics we are going to cover are these. Some of them have already started, but let's go one by one. Now, what is the purpose of Power Query? It is to get the data and clean it so that it can, it can be analyzed the way we want. And of course, do it as automatically as possible without wasting time every cycle because cleanup is repetitive. Now, in order to understand what is clean data, we have to know exactly what clean data means. So this is the checklist for clean data. When you look at your data, look at every column which has come in and check all these 10 things. If all the 10 things are good, then no data cleanup is required. If any of them are not correct, for example, there are merged cells or there are inconsistent data types or there are unwanted sub or grand totals, then you have to repair that part. So this checklist tells you, is your data clean? Yes, no. If not, what is the unclean part? And then that guides you to exactly what to do to clean it. There are other things also, but let's go with this to start with. We will, there are few things which many of people don't understand. So some of them are obvious. Obviously a column has to have a heading. It should have consistent data type. It should not have duplicate headings for obvious reasons. No merge cells. Merge cells, you do whatever you want in output, not in input. Input data is raw data. You're not supposed to look at it. You're supposed to use it to create a report which is worth looking at. So all this is for raw data. So a couple of things which are not so obvious, I will show you. One of the things which is not obvious is formatting. Very often we put formatting instead of data. That's bad. That is not good. Why? Because even if you remember what yellow means and red means, others don't know it. And you are also going to forget it after some time. And even if you remember it, you can't sort, filter, or more importantly, get analytics on color or any other formatting. So you can't say give me total of yellow color. So bottom line, if you need to analyze something, it has to be a column. That's all there is to it. Then one type means, of course, every column should have one type of data, but that also can be misleading. For example, here, this is amount, but suppose I put empty. That's okay because this is either zero or I don't know, but here it is not okay because this Empty is different meaning and this empty is different meaning. So is this. So gaps in these two columns need to be filled. Gaps in this column are okay because they have a business meaning. These things are not business meanings. That's just convenience. 
or maybe someone created an output typically pivot table in pivot table you can always go and fill the gaps in one instant like this you go to design report layout and say repeat all item labels by default it is like this repeat all item label solves the problem so if you are doing copy paste from pivot table this is the way to fill gaps the other things which are important is very important part data should always grow vertically like this so if it's a muster fine on paper it was like this but that doesn't mean we do it in excel even though it has lot of columns so 1 2 3 4 it goes on and on that is what data grows horizontally we don't want that data should grow vertically which means there should be only three columns how to do this we will see but just understand what clean data means so these are the 10 rules for clean data there is an 11th rule assume you got all this done and your data is now clean very good what is the 11th rule 11th rule is if you have multiple pieces of good data which are related to each other don't keep them separately this is very important because very often we get data for reporting purposes periodically monthly quarterly weekly every time we import the data we clean it up make a report save it as a separate file then second month repeat third month repeat so you have 12 files at the end of the year now if you realize yes the months are different but the data is in similar context the data is same just the change is month so ideally don't keep them in 12 sheets or 12 files keep them in one place how do we make it in one place so example this data came from north so i put it in north sheet south sheet west sheet whatever that's not a good idea because whatever you put in file name or sheet name cannot be analyzed whatever you put in a column can be analyzed so yes you do need to keep track of which data is north which is south which is west because those three people sent it to you separately of course you want to know which row is what but this is not the way to do it the individual pieces of data are clean as per our rules so the combination should also be clean not scattered why because if you keep it like this consolidating it is going to be painful so what do you do whatever you would have put otherwise in the sheet name or file name put it as a column that's all there is to it even if nobody is asking for a consolidated report do it sooner or later someone will ask even if they don't ask good opportunity for you you look at the combined data find some trends which others who are only seeing it periodically in isolation are going to miss and then you add value to your business okay so that's about 11 rules now let's talk about where to get data from there are lots of data sources now number of data sources are different whether it is excel or power bi and there is a third one called data flows that currently supports around half of them so 78 so what are these seven kinds of files can be imported 11 types or rather here 37 types of databases can be connected to seven azure services can be connected from excel 17 from power bi and so on and so forth so let's see where this menu is so that we get familiar with it in excel where do we go we go to a new file or same file doesn't matter but ideally a new file i'll tell you why data get data from file and then we have options like that we have from database from azure and so on so i have just counted these and given you these things of course in excel there is a option called power bi so power bi data can be directly consumed in excel that's the integration between the two we will see what is the benefit of that a little later so this is the story for excel in power bi what happens is this in power bi you go to the home tab and get data click on more so that you see all sources again all is confusing because they are all mixed up go and look at all the options yes i mean it go and look at all the options not now later category by category and don't just read them cursorily think do i or will i get data in this type 
for example many people miss this pdf is a very important source for many people because they get pdf outputs from various places and they have to copy paste tabular data into excel similarly databases they are not just microsoft databases there are many databases there is a scroll bar scroll and at least read the name of each because for all you know some of these you already have in your enterprise if you are not sure show this to your it team and say do we have any of these if yes then it's a good news because now power bi can directly connect to those sources rather than exporting some random report or csv and then importing into excel so it eliminates one step it may say you know you can't be given data access so prove to them that this is read only and you can define the frequency with which you want to touch that data so that it doesn't affect uh, the back end systems performance this is power platform power bi data sets we will see what those mean common data services basically means data verse a more evolved database which is not just a database it is a database security engine and business process engine all in one normally we have database separate and everything else is built on top of it data versus all of them bet so bottom line if you have data in your applications it is already being stored in some database no problem but if you have some data which you are randomly capturing in excel sharepoint something like that but it is business critical try to move to data verse it will give you a lot of benefits we will do a separate session on that next time but remember data verse is like data boss it's a boss of database in terms of functionality data flows we'll see later as you raise many services again we'll go and look at it you'll be surprised many of these your it may be using in the background and online services a long list not just from microsoft you'll see salesforce google adobe all of them are here if you are using linkedin many people are using linkedin sales navigator this is in beta but you can start using it so some most many of these connectors remain in beta for some time and then they get finalized and then of course there's a very long list of other services other most common and most probably important is web you can go to any web page and scrape data without having an rpa tool o data feed sounds technical but you'll be surprised many data sources including your cloud applications like your finance hr marketing may be giving you o data feeds so things which you are exporting as a report and then export to excel technically can come as o data feed and that's clean data minimal effort required to clean it up and then there are many many other things and the worst possible scenario a simple blank query also for legacy databases which are old like say fox pro clipper kind of things no problem odbc and oladb still work i can't think of any database engine in the world which doesn't have one of these connectors so even if your database is some arcane database it can connect using one of these so that's about data sources now how do we connect to them so remember we are trying to bring in tables and a collection of tables is called a database so that's common across all sources now there are two types of connections we will not go into those right now but uh, just to make sure you will understand by default whatever we do we go to power bi we install power bi desktop and then import the data generally when you are doing that the data is getting physically imported a copy of the data is getting physically imported into power bi desktop and that data stays with that when you publish it it goes to power bi portal so that is the local version this is the most commonly used but many data sources especially database oriented sources do give you direct query which is a better option for large data handling and it also is real time near real time so if you have iot kind of thing you should use this if you have transactional data where real timeness is not required data is small use this and some databases of course provide live connection you can go and understand the differences between the two but for our purpose this doesn't matter right now we are going to focus on local part most of the things do work in all of them but there are some limitations about what you can do in cleanup if it is direct query or live what does this primary difference mean 
primary difference means here the data is physically copied into your power bi file here the data is not kept in power bi the data is requested from the underlying data source when you refresh the visual or dashboard that's the difference data is here data is not here where is this data then wherever it came from it could be sap it could be oracle whatever like that okay so far so good now let's look at the process we have seen data sources we don't do anything else you always use power query to connect to the data sources get the data one piece two pieces 20 pieces doesn't matter each piece coming from a different source doesn't matter and then we clean it up here and once we are happy with it we put it in the data model or in case of excel the excel sheet also and then we do whatever we want to do for analytical purpose now assuming we created the report in data uh, power bi for example i got the data here and then i created some visual here and then what happens where is all this going so i'm just creating a visual because i want something to be there that's all a simple pivot table like thing but i'll convert it to a pie chart for example now this visual this thing is on local power bi desktop how do you do that how do you download it you go to powerbi.com login using a corporate id it does not require any money to be paid to microsoft just log in to power bi once you log in to powerbi.com and log in you will see you will see download and in download power bi desktop that is what i am showing you right now once you download power bi desktop log in in power bi desktop as well so that you can publish it there is a sign in option at the bottom anyway so now whatever i am doing here i went to get data i imported the data it has come into this data model this is there physically in this file now i created a report out of it it's a very simple report but never mind now if i save this what happens it creates a file called pbix file so let me save it as what is the file extension pbix file this also will contain data means what if it's very large data this file becomes very large now i can send this file to each other but it will be size limitation first of all and second thing is the other person also needs to have power bi desktop installed i can do that for free but then i am exposing my entire raw data to those people if you only want them to see the dashboard interact with it but not touch the raw data or my formulas or my structure of the dashboard then you have to publish it when you publish it what happens when you publish it it goes to power bi portal which is here now when you go to power bi portal if you publish a report two things will get uploaded this is the icon for report and this is the icon for data set so what happened here in this data set whatever was in power bi desktop in the data tab notice i have two tables here both these tables became a data set when they went to power bi so if i click on this data set this has both the tables basically now this data set is being used to generate this report okay but now that this data set is here i can use this data set to create other reports as well and very important if i feel that all the effort which i have put in creating and cleaning up this data set is not just useful to me but for my team also i can actually go to settings and publish this data source or as a what we call it as endorsement means what i am helping my colleagues say i like this data set i think it will be useful to you why don't you also use it and say promote it so when people go to data sets they can see the data set and use it so that the effort of cleaning up and all that is completely eliminated for them as a user you can promote as the administrator you can certify that is a higher level of trust someone who understands technology security database has created the data set and given it to you to use it then in that case no clean up for you directly use create the report so that's what i'm saying you get the data keep a copy here make a data model make a report publish it and then it becomes a data set which can be reused so now let's look at the common scenarios 
lots of scenarios so I am going to go very quickly. Let us start with web because it is very common. Let us go to something which is having tabular data. I just need any web page which has tabular data. So I am just going to go to some Wikipedia page. This is tall buildings in the world. Now this is a table I wanted. Do not even think about copy pasting it because you know what will happen. So now you copy the URL, go to Power Query. I am going to show some demos in Excel, some demos in Power BI because practically it does not matter. If the data source is common, the method is same. In this case, let us do it in Excel. So now I have this. It that analyzes the HTML, finds the tables. If there was a login, it will ask you for the login and remember it for next time as well. And then it is analyzing all the tables in that page. And then these tables, we do not know what names have been given unless you are a developer and you go to the debug mode, but usually you will not know. So if the developer has not given proper names to the table, they will look like table 1, 2, 3, 4. So you will have to do a little bit of trial and error to find out which table you wanted. Some tables may be different, some table, HTML itself is a table. So little bit of trial and error, when you find the table, don't load, wait. You look at this and say, is this exactly what I want or do I need any cleanup? So very important decision you have to take by looking at the preview. It has already cleaned it up by the way. Now there are two options here, load and transform. Load means everything is okay, I do not need to clean it up, so load it as it is. Transform means there is some repair I need to do, which is what we will see. But load as a drop down. This is very important, never click on load directly because sooner or later it will bite you. Load 2, because this is Excel, you get two options. That is why there is load and load 2. Load will put it in Excel sheet by default, load 2 will give you a choice. So it is saying, do you want to add this to a data model? Yes. Why would I want to add it to a data model? Because the data is very large and it is not fitting on Excel sheet or many times it is fitting on Excel sheet, but even you do not have to fill 1 million rows for Excel to become slow. Depending on how less valuable you think your organization thinks you are, you will be given a lower end machine and lower end Excel. So that large data is dependent largely on that combination. So it does not have to be 1 million rows. If you have slow Excel files, create a new blank Excel file and import that data into data model directly. Now when I do this and click OK, it is going to import it in both places, which is really boring and stupid because it is going to occupy space twice, it does not serve any purpose. So table means sheet, data model means data model. So here I do not want table, so you say only create connection. That is the way to import data directly into data model in Excel. When do you do that? Large data number one or you are getting multiple pieces of data and doing VLOOKUP, you want to eliminate VLOOKUP by doing relationships. Anyway, so now when I do this, it will go into the data model. Let me show you how that works. Now it has gone into data model. So my Excel sheet is empty. There is nothing in my Excel sheet, but the data is very much there. It is saying 41 rows loaded, it is even showing me. How do I go to the data model? Power pivot data model, of course the data is there. Now let us say I made a mistake and I had a second thought, no I wanted it to be in Excel sheet. No problem, right click, load to, say table, remove data model. Now it will warn you that data model will be deleted which is okay and now it got the data here. Now that we have got the data, let us look and see, is it clean? No, actually it is not clean because the word M, F, T, comma, that should not come, these are not numbers. So generally, even if it looks good, it is not usually good. Now what do I do? I click on edit. Now the Power Query Editor opens. Earlier in my, when I put the URL, instead of load, if I had said transform, it would still come here. So this is your best friend for cleanup. This dialog looks similar, almost same, whether it is Excel or Power BI. The syntax is same, language is same menus are same except for one or two. So what do we do here? So look at the columns. 
first thing to look at is do i have all the columns do i need all the columns or do i need all the rows because very often in today's world the only place or only way for you to look at the data very often is after you import it and then you decide here you are seeing it before import really even if this was to 5 whatever million rows this takes a top 1000 rows and shows you top n rows actually it depends on some other parameters but typically 1000 so even if your data is very large you can see a sample of it very quickly decide what clean up to do and then do the real import that itself is a revolution in terms of time saving because if the data is large the only way to clean it is to first get unclean data in excel and then struggle with it but because it is large everything is getting getting slow that part is now completely transformed anyway so first thing is uh, to check do you need all columns if you don't need a column remove it if you made a mistake no problem there is a list which gets created here this is like macro getting recorded applied steps everything i do will be added here as a step so if i made a mistake just delete that step it comes back in fact if i do anything and i want to see how it looked before no problem so i am removing three columns just for demo purpose right now i can always go and step back so this is how it was originally then this happened then this happened like that so anything can be removed this is like undo or you can while keeping the steps go and back and forth to see what is happening step by step now a good way of doing that is to select what you want and if there are too many columns and few you want select what you want in this case i am selecting all of them so what was simpler remove the unwanted column but if there were 70 columns and i wanted only 6 what was a better way select the ones you want right click in the selection and say remove other columns other way is to click on this area which is at the grid cross section that table like thing and in that you can see choose columns which gives you a list of all the columns so at properly without getting struggled and without struggling with control click you can do it so multiple ways so in this case i'm just going to remove this one now the second thing you have to look at is data quality data types data types are shown directly there abc means text height is also being shown as text that's bad so now if the data type is not correct you have to repair it how do you repair it click on it and choose the correct data type sometimes it works in this case it's not going to work because even if i say whole number there is text there so this is going to give me an error so if error comes don't panic first look at the error don't delete the step so you have to at least understand what the error is so when you click on an error it goes and shows you that cell and the actual error text text to what did not work no problem i delete this and this error happened because you change type so remove this also so we are back so how do we manage this i want to split this column based on that space between number and feet split column is like what we do in excel by delimiter character similar little more powerful because in excel when you choose the delimiter what happens is the delimiter has to be so as you may have got this data i have cleaned it up and so on and so forth now this data is coming from a web page and the web page is going to change tomorrow some new building will come that time i don't have to do all this jugglery right click and refresh it remembers the url assuming that url is still alive and the table is still there with the same name it will do the job that is the difference so what did we achieve first time we did little bit of effort we got clean data second time onwards it just a refresh as long as the data source or location is same that is revolutionary in terms of time saving so this is how you get data now of course you can create whatever you want based on whether it is excel or power bi the capabilities are different of course in excel also there is a 3d map i hope you know that and you could have created a map based on this showing the locations and the building now in this case the building it is showing me the map 
it is showing me the locations and of course I want to see the height so height yes, there is a column so if I put the height column and if that height column is numeric properly it will actually show me the buildings and how tall they are and then I can zoom in zoom out and see what happens similar map visuals are available in power bi as well so it's up to you what you do with the data we are not talking about the analytics part today the cleanup part so this was one situation now let's look at other scenarios pdf is a very common scenario so let me show you that pdfs can contain tables right so we have pdf with a table various types of variations are possible in this table what do i mean by that it could be a simple table like this it could be table with merge cells it could be a long table when long table also two types whether there is a header and yes if there is a header if the table is breaking across pages is the header repeating properly so in this table the header is repeating properly but I have another table similar structure but on page 5 if there is a header it is going across pages but the header is not repeating all these scenarios now you can import directly into excel or power bi so let me show you how to do that so i'm going to copy the path of that file go to power bi and try it out okay get data from web and then give the url no this is not web sorry this is pdf so get data from file if you don't see it here go to more and go to file so file pdf this is available in excel as well if you don't see it in excel that means you don't have the file app absolute latest version of excel this was added i think six months or one year back but your it team may not have refreshed your office that frequently ask them to update office if you have the new version if you don't have the new version then you will not get this in excel only in power bi anyway connect give the file name now this is not a database but it considers as a database what did it do it considered the web page as a database and showed me a list of tables the same thing it is doing here but because this is a document it is giving me two lists one is pages and one is tables so now on page one notice there are two tables so this page I don't want to import but here what you see it's showing table 1 and 2 which happen to be on first page so now it has clearly taken the first table and the second table all good the merge cells it unmerged that's why our rule is no merge cells because cleanup will not work anyway the second the other table which was on page 3 and 4 that had a header which was repeating so it is smart enough to understand that there is a table called table 3 which is spanning across three pages so you without you having to lift your finger it has actually combined the table across three pages this is beautiful and efficient the other table although it is actually the same table because it doesn't have a header notice it's column one column two here and the first it is this so you'll have to do some extra jugglery to combine it but potentially now I can import this data load transform if no cleanup transform no transform required load so now from PDF I directly got the data this is amazing and useful okay next another very common thing CSV files in a folder so what happens there is I have a folder and in that folder I have multiple files obviously the structure of the files has to be same for all this to work structure means columns and data types have to be same so i have a folder here i am picking it up from here i don't want to manually open and copy paste data which is what you would do otherwise or write a macro or something like that or use a third party add-in all of that is not required any longer Shesham, are there any questions yes there are a few questions anything to be answered right now please ask sure okay um how to apply formula in power bi with multiple variable like some product average cost per kg etc 
Yes, yes. So that's more of a DAX calculation kind of thing. I am going to cover calculations a little later, but those calculations are mainly for the purpose of cleanup only and some calculations which can be done at the time of cleanup rather than after the data is in the data model. The question he is asking is more about DAX formulas which we are not going to cover today. Next question. Does Power Query functionality available in online Excel? No, but there is a direct Power Query itself available on cloud which is called Data Flow. So if you go to Power BI, you go to powerbi.com and create a workspace. So I have create, created a workspace here. You go to workspace, go to your workspace. Workspace is the place where all your data and reports are. From here, you can create a data flow. Now you will see data flow asks you various options. Define new tables is what you want. And here it gives you similar options. File, we have seen these options. Database, seen these options. So similar things. This is Power Query on the web. So now if I say file, this Excel workbook has to be on OneDrive because we are talking online. Similarly, if you say PDF, this file has to be available somewhere online and so on. But yes, same thing, directly do it on Power Query Online, which is data flow. Next. In direct or live data connection are not able to merge with other tables. Is there any option to overcome this issue? Now it has been overcome. We have something called composite tables, so you can create multiple independent connection to different data sources using direct query and match them up in a local uh, desktop query with additional calculated columns merging and all that. Earlier it was not possible. Search for the topic composite models in Power BI. How to build correlation between two Excel files in Power BI? Yeah, I'll be showing that. Is it possible to get real-time data from a predefined SharePoint location? Yes, that's what here. We can go to file, you can go to SharePoint folder and connect. And because this data flow is running on browser itself or cloud, basically, you can set the refresh frequency. In fact, any data can be refreshed. But depending on where the data is, either it will happen automatically or using a gateway. But technically speaking, any data source can be auto refreshed. So once you publish the data show source on the cloud, you go to setting and there you can schedule a refresh. Depending on the type of data, you will have different options here. If the data source itself is on cloud, no problem. If the data source is on your local drive, that means on local server or your machine, PC, laptop, then what do you need? You need another download called data gateway. You install it on the server locally, on premises server or your machine, PC, laptop, something like that. And then you can make them work with each other and then you can define the frequency. So the frequency can be daily, weekly, monthly. The lowest you can go is hourly in the standard set. In premium capacity, you can have more frequent refresh. But don't overdo refresh, it's an overhead. Just do it bare minimum because this is reporting. This is not live data transactions. So be sensible about the refresh frequency. Okay, next. Last question for now. Can multiple PDF files be imported which have a common data spanning into different periods? Yes, technically yes. But finally, because each file will be a data source, you will have to get multiple queries and then append the queries together, assuming their columns are same. I will show you how to append. Okay, good. So now I have this folder. I have files. I copy the folder name. This time we will see it in Power BI. So what do I want to do? I want to go to get data from where? Again, here folder. So folder is under files. So go to file folder. Exactly same method in Excel as well. open it will show you something like this now because there are multiple files other than load and transform there is a combine option as well of course we want to combine now 
I have seen the data. I know that the data is clean. That's why I'm saying combine and load. If I had not seen the data, I'm seeing it for the first time. There is some cleanup required. I would have said clean, combine and clean, combine and transform. So let's say combine and transform anyway. But the combine part, who is going to do? Power BI will do or or query rather. Now, because it has never seen the files before, it needs to know which file should it consider as the first file. Why is this important? If all your files have the same data structure, same columns and all of them have column headings, then it doesn't matter. Sometimes you have some file without column headings. So give it name of a file which has proper column headings so that it can take it as a sample. Generally, first file is taken. That's OK. So you click OK and just relax. It will do the job. And now what has it shown me? It is showing me the data which is combined. And what has it done? It picked up data from three files. Of course, we did not want to lose track of which row of data came from which file. So it has added a column called source.name, which is your file name. Now you can clean the data, import it, go and say load and then work on it. That's how this works. On the left side, it has done a lot of jugglery there. Don't bother. That happens automatically. It created a parameterized query and then repeated the query for every file. But never mind that. So this is how multiple files can be combined very quickly. The other thing is suppose, okay, let me get this data, close and load. Where is it going? Data model in Excel. So this is where it went, data model, sorry, data model in Power BI. In Excel, it can be in sheet or data model. Now, just to complicate matters a little more, if I add a file, let's say I add um, April CSV here into that, what happens? Uh, I have four files now. What do I need to do? I don't need to repeat. I am already in data model. I don't want to transform. I don't want to import. I have defined all this. Just do refresh. And it picked up that as well. So that's how this works. All right. So let's go to the next one. Many times we have data which is in bad format in Excel and we need to repair it. Some of the bad formats are very important to understand. So let's do that. If you have a pivot table with gaps, I showed you how to fill it up with uh, repeat all item labels. But if this data did not come from pivot table or for whatever reasons, you don't have access to that pivot table. How do you fill it up? So now very important, very often we have data in Excel. And then I'm saying if you want to clean the data, you should use Power Query. Where is Power Query? Data, get data. Now, where is this data? It is an Excel file, yes, but we are already in that Excel file. So in this case, you can say from sheet, but you should ideally never do it because for demo purpose, I'll show you first and then I'll tell you the reason why you should not do it. So when I say from sheet, of course, you have selected something. It will convert it to a table. Excel tables are absolutely a must because that's the way it range. The range is properly understood. Name ranges don't work with Power Query. Mm -hmm. Tables work. So now it created Power Query again. And then what is the problem we are facing right now? These empty cells. Empty cells in Excel are shown as null. So we want to fill those null. We are not replacing those nulls, remember. Because we don't have a single value for the null. Here the value is Jan, down below it is Feb. So select both the columns. Right click and say fill down. So it fills all how to do it, not your problem, it does it. If it was in the reverse chronological order, you would have said fill up and then just close and load the data. As simple as that. Now notice what it did. My raw data is still there in the sheet called gaps. Whichever method of importing data you use, whether it is on cloud, whether it is Power BI desktop or Excel, Power Query never changes or touches the raw data. It gives you the output separately. So it added a table, which is the output table. Now, what is happening here? My raw data is here. It's occupying space. My output data, which is clean, is also here. They are occupying space twice. 
that's why i said although in get and transform data there is a from sheet option ideally you should not do it especially if the data is going to be large what should you do in that case close this file open a blank file get data from file and then pick it up we have the table here and job is done so only the clean data is in the final file not occupying space twice for demo i am just showing you this and just to complete the story if i add more data here what is it going to do of course it will understand so let me just talk 21 and then of course i just do right click and it will do the job okay let me delete this table another very common problematic file is called a cross tab there is a horizontal table and there is a vertical table mixed up typically like a output of a pivot table but many a times it's not a pivot table if it was a pivot table you would have the raw data behind it you don't need to clean it anyway you can't create a pivot table when this the data is clean but this is looking like a pivot table but it's not a pivot table very often many business reports come like this now what do we do this is bad data this column is good this columns are bad why because every column should have a header not data here data is sitting in front of header ideally i need three columns product month and amount i can't do that i can't transpose because if i transpose this will go here and desktop will come here that's not what i want actually i want row by row transpose so that i can create three columns so remember this looks like a pivot table so how do you make this into clean data again i am showing you from sheet but don't do it connect to this as a separate excel for demo purpose it's okay so this is the good column these are the bad columns so select the bad columns right click and remember i said this looks like pivot so we want to undo that pivot even though there is no pivot so you just say unpivot columns and then it does the job so now we have three columns now the problem with this is generally the good column will be few and bad columns will be many so instead of wasting time selecting the bad columns you select the good column right click and say unpivot other columns output is same but it is not only more convenient not only more convenient look at the look at the unpivot other columns formula right unpivot other columns what is it saying in this formula it automatically generates this formula and it's important not necessary for you to learn it good for troubleshooting and if you want to do some more sophisticated stuff then you learn it but what i'm trying to tell you here is although we had jan feb march april many columns in this function what is it looking at it is saying only the prod column keep it as it is rest of the columns you what is the benefit of that the benefit of this is when you look at our data tomorrow you may get a column called may june july if you had explicitly selected the columns and said on pivot it would have hard coded the names of jan feb march april that is not what you want so on pivot other columns is always a better option because other are columns get added the base columns don't change usually if they change then you'll have to go and repeat it anyway so now i have got the data the only thing is it doesn't know what to call them so just give them names by double clicking month and whatever you want to call it and then the job is done now when i say close and load of course it will add a new sheet and i get whatever i want now what happens if i add may that's what i was telling you when i say may and here we will put something distinct now i go here and uh, do what go here and right click and refresh and it does the job that's how it is now if there are multiple tables then it's a different situation so if there are multiple sheets in excel and you want to combine them that's a different ball game now you have to use a completely different story this i can select one by one and combine but i'll show you a different way of doing it i need this file to be picked up in a different manner by creating an empty excel file and then importing it so i'm going to close this file and then what then i'm going to open a new blank excel file and then show you how to get it now i go to data get external data sorry not from web get data from file excel and here 
I have to give the file which I was just showing you. So let me give you that file. Now this file has many tables. We have four tables there called North, South, East and I have given them names North, South, East like that. So I actually want all four tables. So I can say select multiple items and then I can create four tables but I'll tell you what the problem is. If I do that and say transform data just to show you what happened behind the scenes what it did is it created four different queries and it will create four tables in your data source. That's not what we want. We want to combine them. no? So when you have multiple sheets, this is not the way to do it. What do you want to do then? You want to do something different. So I don't want this. We go to this part called navigation again. Now what is happening here? Now it's no longer giving me multi-select. Doesn't matter. I'm just going to select one of them. Okay. So now what happens here? I have a query. I have navigation change type. But if you go to source, notice what happens. The first one. So I delete change type. I delete navigation. I have source here. Now what does this do? This is showing me many things. This is actually showing me what was shown in that table dialog. So it's telling me in this Excel file, there are lots of things. And look at the kind. Some are sheets, some are tables. So we definitely don't want to bother about sheets. So, so right click on sheet and say do not equal means remove the rows which are of type sheet. Okay. Now these are remaining but we have some tables which have nothing to do with our data. So whichever filter condition you want. In this case there is only one table so I am going to say does not equal. Now what is it showing? It's showing me these four tables. Okay, so what do I do now? I want to expand those tables. Yes, I can. So this is a very powerful button. I can say expand. So what does it say? Do you want expand? Yes. There are so many columns. Do you want to expand? Yes. And now we actually got this. You got the idea? We got exactly what we wanted. And then there are some unwanted columns also, right? There are unwanted columns. What are the unwanted columns? item i want the column table name so i keep this but these columns i really don't need so i remove the columns and now these are the bad this is like a pivot table but these are the bad columns i want to transpose them in our case what is transpose unpivot so i'll say select the good columns unpivot other columns and then i got tabular data combining four separate sheets if the individual seats were clean, then this step was not required. It would have combined the data anyway. So I did unpivot and combination of multiple pieces from the same Excel file. So as you can see, this gets multiple features can be combined to get more sophisticated things. Imagine how you would, you would be doing it without Power Query. It would be really cumbersome. All right. Similarly, Excel files in a folder. Ideally, Excel files in a folder should have data in a table and the table name should be same. Then you can just combine them like CSV itself. Unpivot we have already seen. Multiple headers is another common requirement because sometimes what happens? You have headers with merged cells. You can't help it. So what do you do in that case? Multiple headers. So if you have data like this with multiple headers, let me open it for you. Like this. This is bad. We know we should not have double layered headings. We should not have merged cells, but the data came like this. What to do? Don't worry. S select the data. Notice what I have done. I have selected one extra row on top. Very important to do it. Why? I will tell you. Because when we import the data from sheet, this is going to make a table. Now, if I had not selected that extra row, it would have taken this row as the header. And then it would have made FY19 as a header and unmerged those cells and all that. So, and here I want this empty row to be considered as a header. So I say, yes, forcibly my table as a header. Okay, so it picks up all that and puts it there. Now, what is it? Now, what do I really want to do? Now, what is happening here? This first row which we had kept blank has become columns, which is okay. The actual data is still there. Now, 
I want to transpose this data. I'll tell you why. Why do I want to transpose this data? Because there are null, null and null, null. But this FY19 is actually both FY19, this is both FY20. But I can't do fill horizontally across columns. I can do fill vertically. So what do I do? I go to transform and there is an option called transpose. Sorry, yeah, transpose. Ki transpose. So what happens? Rows become column, column becomes rows. It's like a special transpose. And now that I have this, I can fill them up, isn't it? I can say fill down. So now I got this done. Now I have not given a name here yet, but don't bother. But at least the data is looking better now. Now this region north, south, actually these are the headings, correct? So what do I do now? If I go to home tab, there is use first row as headers. So now what happened? These just escalated here. Now this was empty. Doesn't matter. I'll just give it FY. Now what is it looking like? It's looking like the earlier situation where we have two good columns and four bad columns. Now we can just do an unprivat other columns and then we got clean data. So that's how even if you have multiple headers, you can manage the show. Okay. Alternate rows is very simple. There is a option called delete alternate rows. So some options I'm just going to show you. You can explore them later. So what is happening here? Look at the menus and explore those menus. Click on each drop down, read each name of the menu and think, what is this doing? Ah, then in this situation, I will need it like that. And this exploration will help you come up with the efficient equivalence to whatever you are doing in cleanup. In this 90 minutes, I can't possibly cover everything. So some of the important things to talk about when you have alternate rows, sometimes you get alternate blank rows. There are options, remove blank rows, remove alternate rows, remove top end rows, bottom end rows and so many other things. Similarly, we have seen other things like split column, which have various options. Data types, generally it understands data types quite well, but if it doesn't, then you have to be careful. You have to look at the data type and think, suppose this was text, for example, it is possible that you just change the data type and it will do the job, right? If there are no errors, this is a good way. For dates, you have to do something special. I'll tell you a little later, but in this case, this is okay. Bottom line is before you say import, you have to explicitly eyeball each column and see what is the data type there and check is it correct or not. If the data types are wrong, your analysis will not work as expected. So that is the data type repair. And when it comes to date by locale, then it's a problem. Sometimes you get dates in DDMM, MMDD. So that's a painful thing to have. So let me show you another piece which has dates and then I'll tell you what happens. So suppose I have dates here and I'm just going to go to power query. In a date column, what happens? If suppose the date column was not properly shown, then what do you do? Suppose this date column was not being, uh, it was being shown as text, for example, because it didn't understand. Now what do I do? If I change it to date, whether it will work or not depends on your current date format. If the date which is here is in DDMMYY format and your Windows setting is MMDDYY format, all these will give you error. So if that is the case, what do you do? That's what I'm showing you. So when you try to change date formats, try the simple version by changing it to date or date and time, whatever you want. But if it doesn't work, <laughs> what to do? This is a little confusing. So don't click on date because it didn't work. If it gave error, delete that step, go back. And then this is a difficult to discover item. What is it saying? Using local. Now, half the people don't know local. Kya hota. Local means country. Using local do what? So never mind. Go there. 
that dialogue has lots of options so it takes a little while to come up now it's asking you what type of format you want so again say date and now if it was say mmddyy you have to find a country where that format is prevalent you can't directly say change it to mmddyy unfortunately you have to find the country where the format would be mmddyy or any other formats in terms of text or whatever so there's a long list you figure it out once you need to know which country is matching and then next time you can just use that exact country doesn't matter the pattern is what finally matters so you choose some country which will have that format and then let's say united states now it has become mmddyy and then you, you click ok assuming your input data was in mmddyy format it will work in this case it will give error it will only give error where the month is going beyond 13 because my first two digits are days and this is a very common problem we have when we just double click randomly on a csv half the time we don't even know many of those dim dates are actually not dates and the ones which have been interpreted as dates their date and month has got reversed so it's a disaster anyway another thing to show here when you look at the column there is column quality being shown so while all this is happening we can actually not only just repair data types we can also see data quality so these panes on top are very important how do we get those so by default it may not be visible so you go to view and in view we have multiple things mono space is just non proportional font column profile column quality column distribution ideally if the data is unfamiliar and doing it for the first time at for every piece of data you should definitely have it open so for every column it gives you a histogram kind of thing showing distinct values and their occurrence when you have an error it will show you a bar chart here stacked bar chart so the red part shows you errors and the other part shows you non errors so three things are actually shown there valid error and empty in our case there is no empty that's why the gray part is not shown but here in city id you will see there are some less than 1% but gray part is the empty cells now when you click on one of these it actually shows you the same chart with more details and there it also shows you statistics where you can see average standard deviation and so on yeah maybe in some cases looking at unique values max sometimes distinct count will matter so this is a very good place to do a quick data quality check and if some is something is a mismatch you can detect errors and correct them now when you import large data what happens if there are large data uh, things which are going to exceed uh, 1 million rows obviously you have to say load to data model but then when the data is large typically it will not be an excel file because the data won't fit anyway it will be a csv or something else so in that case what is the practical problem we have earlier we had to open that file in excel and it could not open in excel so we were stuck so now when you import any data i'm going to take a file uh which is large and i'll show you something when the data is large how do you even see it to understand what is there and how to clean it up so the idea is very simple i am taking a file which is uh, i am using a file which is uh, 134 mb csv file probably it will not even open in excel so what am i doing i am going to go to power bi and ask it to open the file what it does is irrespective of what your data source is and irrespective of how small or large your data is what does it do when i say go and pick up a file i'm just going to discard the changes for now so let's let's go and pick up the csv file give the path irrespective of how large the file is it will open and show you a preview right 
preview is typically shown based on the first thousand rows and the data type because in csv there is no data type information so the data type is inferred or detected based on the first 200 rows if you found this to be difficult then you say entire but this will take time or you set the data type you will manage it instead of that so the moment you say you will manage then the column names are gone if you allow it then it will pick up the column names like that anyway so bottom line is important part is irrespective of how large the input file is you can actually see the data without using any third party tool or struggling to import it in excel or word or notepad plus plus or whatever other mechanisms you use to struggle now the other part is when i say transform the transformation is also happening on the sample data of first whatever number of rows so it's very fast only when you have decided these are the columns i want these are the rows i want these are the data types i want when you are really clear as to exactly what you want till then it is just working on the first 1000 rows so this part is very fast only when you say close and apply that is the time the real import is going to start that saves you enormous amount of time and effort and struggle so that's what i mean importing large data there is no limit to number of rows as i said the hardware is the limit if it's really large data and the data base is amenable to be picked up and you have the capacity in power bi do it on data flow which is a power query on cloud because on cloud there is hardware being managed by microsoft data center so if your machine is slow try through data flows this i already showed you one very important thing many people try to import large data in power bi it doesn't stop them it does import eventually it will take time depending on how good or bad your machine is and how large the data is but it will import and then you can do whatever you want many people don't realize that the data which we have imported we are using it for reporting now if you have 5 million rows we are not going to show 5 million rows in the report we are going to summarize them so if you are summarizing them think can we summarize some of the rows at the time of import itself so that 1 million may reduce dramatically so remember the question to ask is check the business need and say is there any visual where i really want to show one particular row from the raw data of 5 million generally that is not the case then you roll up the data you can group the data so if there is a lot of data and it is becoming painful and you realize that you don't need that much level of granularity or detail what do you do you group it where you group it in power bi power query itself so you can say group by for example i have data here and this says i think 200000 rows i know you are right now you don't even know how many rows but never mind so i have this data i want to group it by whatever this column is it's a channel name so what do i do i say group by and choose the name of the column in this case my column 1 and what do i want i want to count the number of rows okay so what happens now there is a grouping happening and of course you can do more sophisticated grouping and you got this now you use this as one query and import it use something else as another query and import it create relationships you can do more flexible reporting with much smaller data set rather than struggling to get every row and then the visual in power bi is actually doing the aggregation for you so pre aggregation at import level itself that's what i'm talking now many a times we create calculated columns in excel because that's the only place we can create it we didn't have anything before excel now if calculated columns are hard coded in the sense they depend only on the data being imported create them in power query it also has a syntax not exactly the same functions but lot of similar functions and then that saves you extra formulas in excel you can also append multiple tables and more importantly equivalent of vlookup you want to denormalize tables into one that can be done using merging for example i have this file here and i have two tables i have cities and transaction right so in the city table i have details about city in the transaction table i have transactions 
but only the city id so let's say i wanted to create a flat table not two tables how would i do that i go to transform i'm going to close these to avoid confusion so now what do i have here i have two tables let me delete this one so i have city master and transaction let's say i want to combine these two in power query itself create a third table called city transaction and then only import that table how do i do that when you right click you say enable load this is load by default if you say don't enable then it will be here in power query but it will not be loaded in data model so now let's say i want to merge these two tables how do i do that i go to home and then say merge queries merge means one to many so this is like a transaction transaction let let me do it from city it will be easier to understand so this is a city master one city appears only once which is the other table transaction okay now it shows you various types of joins if you don't understand joins just live with it if you understand joins you will realize that there are anti joins also this is a very good place for comparing two blocks of data we do it with weird we look up um, some random formulas which is always inefficient i have one set of transactions another set of transactions or one set of customers who came for this event another set of customers who came for that event i want to see which ones are here and not there which ones are there and not here that's called anti join anyway it also supports so what am i saying city code here is the same as city id here and then you choose now sometimes people make mumbai has double b it also has a fuzzy matching of matching option which is really powerful i won't go into details but if you have spelling mistakes and matching is not happening you can ignore case suppose someone has written ahmedabad as two words it will understand and you can also give it the tolerance level as to what is this threshold you can give and that is a number depending on the fuzziness you can give the threshold so it's really powerful so this is how you merge the data and it will create a single table now now notice what is happening here transaction became a single thing i can expand it and then all the transaction table columns will get added to city column it will get a denormalized table i'm not going to troubleshoot that error because that's not the point right now this is how you merge and this is how you have fuzzy logic for merging very very powerful thing so with that i hope you have understood the concept of power query it's available in cloud as well and data flows which get created on cloud sources can be still offline or your on premise using the gateway processing happens online in case of excel it's happening on your desktop power bi happening on your desktop data flow processing online and once it is there data sets get created which can be used in power bi dataverse which means power platform and azure it can save it in power bi itself or in dataverse or in azure what is power platform power platform means power bi itself power automate and power apps and power virtual agents okay so finally once you have created this data set how do you share it with people i have already shown it to you you can go to power bi portal and mark your data set as a endorsed data set so people can trust your data set admins can do certified this is the way you should give clean data to people if you are from it or data side this is your job not creating dashboards for people let them do whatever they want let users be given clean authentic auto refresh data without them struggling to do it so you certify it and then how will people use it in two ways if you are using excel you go to excel get data in excel you go to sorry or queries open in excel you go to uh, what is open Just give me a second. How many questions are there, Shishim? Approx? Many or few? We we have about five odd questions. Okay. So I just want to show you this, and then we'll take questions. So what I'm talking about is, 
if you have data sets which are published in Power BI, how do you consume them? That's what I'm showing you. First of all, how do you create and publish a data set? I hope that is clear. Creating a data set cannot be done from Excel. You import the data in Power BI. You may or may not want to create. If you just want to publish a data set, clean it, get it into data area, publish it. Then it goes to Power BI portal. Once you go to Power BI portal, you will see all your data sets. You can certify them, share it with people. We are not sharing reports. We are sharing raw, clean data. Now, in Power BI, how do you consume that data? So let's say I have a new Power BI report now and I want to use one of the data sets which I have already created. That's easy. You go to data, more. In fact, there is a button here itself called Power BI data sets. But here, Power Platform, you can use any of the existing data sets. You can also use data flows, which I talked about earlier. And these are data flows from other, these are Power Platform data flows and these are data flows from Power BI itself. There are two types, but basically they are Power Query on Cloud. That's how you use it. So if I say data sets now, notice what happens. It is going to go to my Power BI and show me all the data sets which I have access to. It shows them which are certified, which are shared by other users and those which are neither promoted nor certified, but I have access to them. That's how I use them in Power BI. In Excel, how do I use them? Again, I go to data from where? Power BI. Here is the one, only one option. It is like data sets. So the same list which we saw earlier in Power BI, the same list will be shown to me here. <laughs> right, data set and endorsement. So if I now go to one of those and use it, where is this data? This data is sitting on cloud. I have one sheet, two sheets. Let me delete the second sheet. This sheet is completely empty. When I click on this, what happens? Data doesn't get downloaded. It will directly add a private table and then you do whatever analysis you want. As simple as that. So that's how you consume data. And notice because it's a power pivot based pivot table, the data set contains multiple tables. All of them are there. So I want state to be added. No problem. And I want uh, something else to be added. I will add it in value area. So one more important thing here, because it's coming from Power BI, uh, normally in a regular data, I would have been able to drag drop amount in value area. That is not allowed. It has to be a major. So if you intend to use it like this, where data sets are published centrally in Power BI and people at user level are expected to use the data, regular numeric columns will not work. You will have to create a measure there called sum of amount and then it can be added. That is not a limitation. That's a good thing because then the calculations can also be centrally controlled so that there is no confusion as to ye number ka se aaya. It has lineage. So that's how the whole system works. The data refresh, if it is online, can happen directly. If it is on offline, it can be. And finally, all this which we are doing in the Power Query context, what is happening behind the scenes? Power Query, whenever you apply a step, is actually creating a syntax for it. And it's a language, M for mashup. So it's called M language. If you want to see what we have applied so many steps, what did it really do? You go to advanced editor. This is the program which got generated behind. On the face of it, it is very daunting, but it is not. It always starts with let, ends with in, and gives me a name. So this is the name of the last command. Whatever is the output of this command will be returned. That's all it means. These names can be anything. Now, source is typically the first because you need data. Now, the name source is something which you can use as a variable in the second. The name of the second one you can use in the third command. So, notice this is city master underscore table and this has been used as a parameter here. So, like that, the previous step's name can be used in the next step as a parameter. That's the concept. And the last step is the output. And then, of course, 
as you go along you look at what you did look at the syntax and then you can learn sometimes you want to add a custom column with calculations that also you can do you can say add custom column and then the syntax available for the little bit you'll have to learn it's quite easy once you get the hang of it finally if you understand flash fill the flash fill equivalent is also available here called column from examples so let me show this to you in the ct table here for example here let me get rid of this column for now i want to create a column which is telling me suppose i had mumbai and india and i want to split the column and i want to give it by example like flash fill so select the column you say column from example from selection and now in that column what am i seeing mumbai india so let's say i want to extract only india so i type an example and then it will figure it out like that just to give you another example let's say column from example from all columns now i can take an example from all the columns just to show you that i am taking the first digit on id then i am taking two characters from the base column and i am taking last two characters of the state r a for maharashtra i didn't understand let's do that again i am taking the first then d e for delhi and l h i so h i for delhi now if you give couple of examples and you are consistent with it it is trying to fill it up so that's what is called column by example it also gives you suggestion so you don't have to struggle like this when you click there it actually has given you lots of suggestions so if you have weird kind of dates and times also this is very useful now if you have premium version then you can do text analytics vision analytics and machine learning models but that is for another day so with that last 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 thing is if you are worried about sensitivity and you have created information protection sensitivity labels which we apply to email and documents those can also be applied to data sets so what are you going to do you are going to go back relook at every piece of clean up you do and improve it using power query share it with your colleagues and standardize it so that everyone who is doing that benefits from it with that i land over to shesham for some announcements and questions hi so we uh, take up the questions uh, we are putting in the feedback link in the q and a panel please do click on the link and share your feedback about this session okay we'll start with the questions yeah one minute shesham i am 4 minutes yeah. ahead of time so if any of you have to leave right now please leave i am going to handle all questions it will be a part of the recording it will be sent to you if you have time please stay on thank you and of course we have to we will announce the two winners also at the end of the session in case you are leaving and you happen to be the winner we will inform you assuming your email id has been mentioned in the question yes question yes yes i'm good yes um we are encountering the below error while using data from olap cubes analysis services the operation was cancelled because of locking conflicts is there any resolution for this error i will have to check i have many customers are using olap but i have not encountered this error frequently uh, if you can send me a mail my email id is there with some screenshots and some little more details i'll be able to help you next how to download and use power bi if we do not have a corporate email id ah uh, there is no answer to that just figure out a way to create a corporate email id i'll give you a work around you take uh, any license of microsoft trial for free for example you go to office.com office for business office for enterprise it will give you a trial for one month in that trial you will get uh, typically 
I don't remember the number, but I think you get 25 users for uh, one month. And there you have to give a domain name and then it will create 25 email IDs for you. So use one of them. In fact, if you are doing that, might as well take the E5 license of Microsoft, which gives you Power BI Pro so that you can learn all the Power BI stuff. So create a trial, use that email ID. Okay. Uh, is it possible to extract data from unstructured data sources? Unstructured uh, can mean many different things. Typically, those will go into some big data thing like Data Lake or Azure Hadoop or whatever, HD Insights. So, typically, all those you can connect to. Real unstructured data will have to go into some data store which can manage it and then connect to Power BI, not directly. Okay. We have around 1000 plus Excel files in standard RPA template, each with five, 300 to 500 plus rows. And what is the best way to analyze? Should we append all or just create a correlation considering above scenario, which analytic tool is better, Power BI or Pixense? So I'm assuming the data in four or 500 files is related. You should combine those files data and keep while keeping the file name as one of the columns and then analyze it together. That makes more sense. I already showed you how to combine multiple files data from multiple files. I showed CSV. Uh, I have a video on how to combine data from multiple Excel files. Also go to my YouTube channel. You will see that then. Next. Okay. While unpivoting, if you have many columns with months, but want to get all the columns by month only, how can this be cleaned up? Generally, when you have multiple columns by months, I'm assuming what you mean is there are three columns with the one Jan, there will be a merge cell above, which is year. So I already told you how to handle that. If it is some other scenario, which is not what I described, then you need to send me a small sample data, which will help me understand the exact pattern, then I can help you. Next. Okay, for different vehicle, different way, variant names are applicable. Example 120 Magna Sport Active and I10 M2, M4, M6. Okay. Wherein Magna is equal to M2, Sport is equal to M4 yeah. and so on. Yeah. Before call your append, how to correlate? Yeah, so this is something where you'll require a mapping table. Import the mapping table first use the mapping table to decode it and then use merge. It's okay. called a transformation yeah. table. You have variations and the variations map to fewer variations. That's called subcategory to category. So create that subcategory to category table, import it as one of the query and then use that table to merge the queries. If you understand database, you will understand what I'm saying. Next. Yeah. <laughs> what is the difference between sharing a data set and using the analyze in Excel functionality of a Power BI model? Can I implement security within a data set? For example, if the data set consists of data from North, South, East and West, can I ensure that person X whom I have shared the data set can only see the North region? Yes. So even if you say analyze in Excel, it is still using the same data set and same sensitivity labels and same security. And if the Excel file gets generated, the same sensitivity label will also be applied to that Excel file or PDF file or PPT for that matter. But manage role based security. Yes, absolutely possible. But that is not in Power Query that will have to be done. When you import the data in Power BI desktop in the data model, you will have to do that. You create roles, create a role. Let's say for a demo purpose, I'll create a role called Mumbai. And then I need to give a query which will filter data for whatever this role is. So now I'll have to go to city master. All the tables are here. Three dots, add filter. What is this city equal to? And then I'll give Mumbai. Now this spelling has to be correct. Whatever name you give her need not match Mumbai. You could have given the XYZ here. 
Now what have we created? We have created a role called Mumbai. Now if you want to see what is visible to that person, you can say view as so that you can test it out. So when I say okay, notice everything will get filtered. Now viewing as Mumbai, apply changes, stop viewing, whatever. And then the data will get filtered on Mumbai. The problem is we still don't know which is the user who is supposed to see it. When will that be done? That will be done when you publish it. Now the data set will be there. In the data set you go and map for roles. So two step process. Define the roles here. Map the roles to people after publishing. That's how role based security is done. Next question. Is it possible to import data from a dashboarding tool in which we generally have to feed data every time to pull up a data? And can we map Power BI with that tool? Dashboarding tool by itself is a tool which generates reports. So if you are saying the output of a dashboard, if you want to import it in Power BI, that is a question like saying, can a dashboard of a BI tool be an input to another BI tool's dashboard? No. But the underlying data, you can always connect because there are 170 types of data. Whatever other tool you are using for that dashboard will be one of those data sources only. So directly connect to the data source. Okay, is it better to create dashboards in Salesforce or Power BI? <laughs> that is a question you will have to answer. You look at what outputs Salesforce is giving out of the box. Of course, there is reporting in any software as a service application, including Salesforce. If the reporting there is enough for you, then you don't need any other tool. But if you are noticing that you are exporting a lot of data from Salesforce to CSV, Excel, and then doing something manually, then you can use Salesforce connector, get that data without that CSV struggle and create your own reports in Excel or Power BI. Power BI will give you more interactivity, more visuals, more control, and better understanding of data. Pivot table and charts, is that's all you can do in Excel. Are using get data from the different Excel file, sometimes it shows source column but no data. What could be the reason? There must be some empty row somewhere. So remember, when you are importing data from Excel, whether you are importing it in uh, Power BI or Excel itself, the raw data must be a table. If you are not using tables, all sorts of problems will come. Make sure it's a table, life will be good. Never import a sheet, always import a table. Because sheet has unwanted rows, unwanted columns, hidden things, comments, all kinds of junk can be there in sheet. Whereas table is a very clearly delineated thing where the first row is always a header and table knows where the data starts and where it ends. In a sheet, everything is ambiguous. What are measures in Power BI? Measures in Power BI are like uh, calculations. We are used to doing calculations in Excel also. We are used to doing for uh, calculated columns and calculated fields in Excel, but measures is a completely different ball game. And it's very difficult for me to actually show it to you right now in few minutes. So let me do it this way. The next event we will do is on how to create measures using DAX in Power BI. Okay, next. How to export visualization dashboard report directly to PowerPoint? You publish it. Once you publish it, it goes to Power BI. So two things. One is we have the data and everything dashboard here in uh, Power BI. So let me open one dashboard so it is easier to understand. And I have published it in Power BI. So while it is published in Power BI, what I can do, I will show here. So let's say this is the report I have published. It's visible here, editable here. I can share it directly from here. All that is okay. Now, if I say file, we have various options. If I say export, I have PowerPoint, PDF and analyze in Excel. So these options of PowerPoint will come here. Now, if it is a report which is in uh, 
power bi itself on desktop what happens in desktop i have file in desktop also i have export but here only export to pdf is there powerpoint is not there so after publishing you get both great so that's it from me thank you take care bye bye